A fern is a member of a group of vascular plants, plants with xylem and phloem, that reproduce via spores and have neither seeds nor flowers. They differ from mosses by being vascular, i.e., having specialized tissues that conduct water and nutrients, in having branched stems and in having life cycles in which the sporophyte is the dominant phase. Like other vascular plants, ferns have complex leaves called megafils, that are more complex than the micropils of club mosses. Most ferns are leptosporangiate ferns, sometimes referred to as true ferns. They produce coiled fiddleheads that uncoil and expand into fronds. The group includes about 10,560 known extant species. Ferns are defined here in the broad sense, being all of the polypodiopsida, comprising both the leptosporangiate, polypodiidae, and eusporangiate ferns, the latter itself comprising ferns other than those denominated true ferns, including horsetails or scouring rushes, whisk ferns, marotioid ferns, and ophoglossoid ferns. Ferns first appear in the fossil record about 360 million years ago in the late Devonian period, but many of the current families and species did not appear until roughly 145 million years ago in the early Cretaceous, after flowering plants came to dominate many environments. The fern Osmunda claytoniana is a paramount example of evolutionary stasis. Paleontological evidence indicates it has remained unchanged, even at the level of fossilized nuclei and chromosomes, for at least 180 million years. Ferns are not of major economic importance, but some are used for food, medicine, as biofertilizer, as ornamental plants, and for remediating contaminated soil. They have been the subject of research for their ability to remove some chemical pollutants from the atmosphere. Some fern species are significant weeds. They also play certain roles in mythology and art. Description Like the sporophytes of seed plants, those of ferns consist of stems, leaves and roots. Stems, fern stems are often referred to as rhizomes, even though they grow underground only in some of the species. Epiphytic species and many of the terrestrial ones have above-ground creeping stolons e.g. Polypodiaceae, and many groups have above-ground erect semi-woody trunks e.g. Cyathaceae. These can reach up to 20 meters 66 feet tall in a few species e.g. Cyathea brownie on Norfolk Island and Cyathea medullaris in New Zealand. Leaf, the green, photosynthetic part of the plant is technically a megaphyll and in ferns, it is often referred to as a frond. New leaves typically expand by the unrolling of a tight spiral called a crozier or fiddlehead fern. This uncurling of the leaf is termed circinate vernation. Leaves are divided into two types a trophophyll and a sporophyll. A trophophyll frond is a vegetative leaf analogous to the typical green leaves of seed plants that does not produce spores, instead only producing sugars by photosynthesis. A sporophyll frond is a fertile leaf that produces spores born in sporangia that are usually clustered to form sori. In most ferns, fertile leaves are morphologically very similar to the sterile ones, and they photosynthesize in the same way. In some groups, the fertile leaves are much narrower than the sterile leaves, and may even have no green tissue at all, e.g., Blechnaceae, Lamariopsidaceae. The anatomy of fern leaves can either be simple or highly divided. In tree ferns, the main stalk that connects the leaf to the stem, known as the stipe, often has multiple leaflets. The leafy structures that grow from the stipe are known as pinnae and are often again divided into smaller pinnules, roots, the underground non-photosynthetic structures that take up water and nutrients from soil. They are always fibrous and structurally are very similar to the roots of seed plants. Like all other vascular plants, the diploid sporophyte is the dominant phase or generation in the life cycle. The gametophytes of ferns, however, are very different from those of seed plants. They are free-living and resemble liverworts, whereas those of seed plants develop within the spore wall and are dependent on the parent sporophyte for their nutrition. A fern gametophyte typically consists of prothallus, a green, photosynthetic structure that is one cell thick, usually heart or kidney shaped, 3 to 10 mm long and 2 to 8 mm broad. The prothallus produces gametes by means of Antheridia, small spherical structures that produce flagellate sperm. Archegonia, a flask-shaped structure that produces a single egg at the bottom, reached by the sperm by swimming down the neck. Rhizoids, root-like structures, not true roots, that consist of single greatly elongated cells, that absorb water and mineral salts over the whole structure. Rhizoids anchor the prothallus to the soil. 
Taxonomy Ferns first appear in the fossil record in the early Carboniferous period. By the Triassic, the first evidence of ferns related to several modern families appeared. The Great Fern Radiation occurred in the late Cretaceous, when many modern families of ferns first appeared. Ferns were traditionally classified in the class Felices, and later in a division of the plant kingdom named Pteridophyta or Philocophyta. Pteridophyta is no longer recognized as a valid taxon because it is paraphyletic. The ferns are also referred to as polypodiophyta or, when treated as a subdivision of tracheophyta, vascular plants, polypodioxida, although this name sometimes only refers to leptosporangiate ferns. Traditionally, all of the spore-producing vascular plants were informally denominated the pteridophytes, rendering the term synonymous with ferns and fern allies. This can be confusing because members of the division pteridophyta were also denominated pteridophytes sensu stricto. Traditionally, three discrete groups have been denominated ferns, two groups of eusporangiate ferns, the families Ophoglossaceae, adder's tongues, moonworts, and grape ferns, and Maradiaceae, and the leptosporangiate ferns. The Maradiaceae are a primitive group of tropical ferns with large, fleshy rhizomes and are now thought to be a sibling taxon to the leptosporangiate ferns. Several other groups of species were considered fern allies, the club mosses, spike mosses, and quillworts and lycopodiophyta, the whisk ferns of Silotaceae, and the horsetails of Equistaceae. Since this grouping is polyphyletic, the term fern allies should be abandoned, except in a historical context. More recent genetic studies demonstrated that the lycopodiophyta are more distantly related to other vascular plants, having radiated evolutionarily at the base of the vascular plant clade, while both the whisk ferns and horsetails are as much true ferns as the ophoglossoid ferns and maradiaceae. In fact, the whisk ferns and ophoglossoid ferns are demonstrably a clade, and the horsetails and maradiaceae are arguably another clade. Molecular phylogenetics Smith et al. 2006 carried out the first higher-level pteridophyte classification published in the molecular phylogenetic era, and considered the ferns as monilophytes, as follows Division tracheophyta tracheophytes, vascular plants Subdivision euphilophytina euphilophytes, Infradivision maniliformopsis, monilophytes Infradivision spermatophyta, seed plants, approximately 260,000 species Subdivision lycopodiophyta, lycophytes, less than 1% of extant vascular plants molecular data, which remain poorly constrained for many parts of the plant's phylogeny, have been supplemented by morphological observations supporting the inclusion of Equistaceae in the ferns, notably relating to the construction of their sperm and peculiarities of their roots. However, there remain differences of opinion about the placement of the genus Equisitum see Equistopsida for further discussion. One possible solution was to denominate only the leptosporangiate ferns as true ferns while denominating the other three groups as fern allies. In practice, numerous classification schemes have been proposed for ferns and fern allies, and there has been little consensus among them. The leptosporangiate ferns are sometimes called true ferns. This group includes most plants familiarly known as ferns. Modern research supports older ideas based on morphology that the Osmundaceae diverged early in the evolutionary history of the leptosporangiate ferns. In certain ways this family is intermediate between the eusporangiate ferns and the leptosporangiate ferns. Rye and Graham 2010 broadly supported the primary groups, but queried their relationships, concluding that at present perhaps the best that can be said about all relationships among the major lineages of monilophytes in current studies is that we do not understand them very well." Gru et al. 2013 confirmed the inclusion of horsetails within ferns sensu lato, but also suggested that uncertainties remained in their precise placement. Other classifications have raised ophoglossales to the rank of a fifth class, separating the whisk ferns and ophoglossoid ferns. One problem with the classification of ferns is that of cryptic species. A cryptic species is a species that is morphologically similar to another species, but differs genetically in ways that prevent fertile interbreeding. A good example of this is the currently designated species Asplenium trichomanes, maidenhair spleenwort. This is actually a species complex that includes distinct diploid and tetraploid races. 
There are minor but unclear morphological differences between the two groups, which prefer distinctly differing habitats. In many cases such as this, the species complexes have been separated into separate species, thus raising the total number of species of ferns. Possibly many more cryptic species are yet to be discovered and designated. Phylogeny The ferns are related to other higher order taxa, as shown in the following cladogram. Subdivision Smith's 2006 classification treated the ferns as four classes Xylotopsida two orders whisk ferns and ophoglossoid ferns approximately 92 species Equistopsida sphenopsida one order equis tails horse tails approximately 15 species Maradiopsida one order Maradiales approximately 150 species Polypodiopsida, Philocopsida, seven orders, Leptosporangiate ferns, approximately 9,000 species. In addition, they defined 11 orders and 37 families. That system was a consensus of a number of studies and was further refined. The phylogenetic relationships are shown in the following cladogram to the level of orders. This division into four major clades was then confirmed using morphology alone. Subsequently, Chase and Reveal considered both lycopods and ferns as subclasses of a class Equistopsida embryophyta, encompassing all land plants. This is referred to as Equistopsida sensu lato to distinguish it from the narrower use to refer to horsetails alone, Equistopsida sensu stricto. They placed the lycopods into subclass Lycopodiidae and the ferns, keeping the term monilophytes, into five subclasses, Aquisididae, Ophoglossidae, Silotidae, Maratiidae and Polypodiidae, by dividing Smith's Silotopsida into its two orders and elevating them to subclass Ophoglossidae and Silotidae. Kristen Hush et al. 2011 followed this use of subclasses but recombined Smith. S. Xylotopsida as Ophoglossidae, giving four subclasses of ferns again. Kristen Hush and Chase 2014 developed a new classification of ferns and lycopods. They used the term polypodiophyta for the ferns, subdivided like Smith et al., into four groups shown with equivalents in the Smith system, with 21 families, approximately 212 genera, and 10,535 species. Acquisitidae equals Equistopsida, monotypic, Equistales, Equistaceae, Acquisitum, horsetails approximately 20 species. Ophoglossidae equals Silotopsida, two monotypic orders approximately 92 species. Maradiidae equals Maradiopsida, one monotypic order, Maradiales, Maradiaceae, two subfamilies, approximately 130 species. Polypodiidae equals Polypodiopsida, seven orders. This was a considerable reduction in the number of families from the 37 in the system of Smith et al., since the approach was more that of lumping rather than splitting. For instance, a number of families were reduced to subfamilies. Subsequently, a consensus group was formed, the Pteridophyte Phylogeny Group, PPG, analogous to the Angiosperm Phylogeny Group, publishing their first complete classification in November 2016. They recognize ferns as a class, the Polypodiopsida, with four subclasses as described by Kristen Hush and Chase, and which are phylogenetically related as in this cladogram. In the pteridophyte phylogeny group classification the Polypodiopsida consist of four subclasses, 11 orders, 48 families, 319 genera, and an estimated 10,578 species. Thus Polypodiopsida in the broad sense, sensu lato, as used by the PPG, Polypodiopsida sensu PPG, needs to be distinguished from the narrower usage, sensu stricto, of Smith et al., Polypodiopsida sensu Smith et al. Ecology The stereotypical image of ferns growing in moist shady woodland nooks is far from a complete picture of the habitats where ferns can be found growing. Fern species live in a wide variety of habitats, from remote mountain elevations, to dry desert rock faces, to bodies of water or in open fields. Ferns in general may be thought of as largely being specialists in marginal habitats, often succeeding in places where various environmental factors limit the success of flowering plants. 
Some ferns are among the world's most serious weed species, including the bracken fern growing in the Scottish Highlands, or the mosquito fern Azola, growing in tropical lakes, both species forming large aggressively spreading colonies. There are four particular types of habitats that ferns are found in, moist, shady forests, crevices in rock faces, especially when sheltered from the full sun, acid wetlands including bogs and swamps, and tropical trees, where many species are epiphytes, something like a quarter to a third of all fern species. Especially the epiphytic ferns have turned out to be hosts of a huge diversity of invertebrates. It is assumed that birds' nest ferns alone contain up to half the invertebrate biomass within a hectare of rainforest canopy. Many ferns depend on associations with mycorrhizal fungi. Many ferns grow only within specific pH ranges, for instance, the climbing fern Ligodium palmatum of eastern North America will grow only in moist, intensely acid soils, while the bulblet bladder fern Cystoteris bulbifera, with an overlapping range, is found only on limestone. The spores are rich in lipids, protein and calories, so some vertebrates eat these. The European woodmouse Apodemus sylvaticus has been found to eat the spores of Culcida macrocarpa and the bullfinch Pyrola marina and the New Zealand lesser short-tailed bat Mistachina tuberculata also eat fern spores. Life cycle Ferns are vascular plants differing from lycophytes by having true leaves megaphils, which are often pinnate. They differ from seed plants, gymnosperms and angiosperms, in reproducing by means of spores and they lack flowers and seeds. Like all land plants, they have a life cycle referred to as alternation of generations, characterized by alternating diploid sporophytic and haploid gametophytic phases. The diploid sporophyte has two n-paired chromosomes, where n varies from species to species. The haploid gametophyte has n unpaired chromosomes, i.e. half the number of the sporophyte. The gametophyte of ferns is a free-living organism, whereas the gametophyte of the gymnosperms and angiosperms is dependent on the sporophyte. The life cycle of a typical fern proceeds as follows. A diploid sporophyte phase produces haploid spores by meiosis, a process of cell division which reduces the number of chromosomes by a half. A spore grows into a free-living haploid gametophyte by mitosis, a process of cell division which maintains the number of chromosomes. The gametophyte typically consists of a photosynthetic prothallus. The gametophyte produces gametes, often both sperm and eggs on the same prothallus, by mitosis. A mobile, flagellate sperm fertilizes an egg that remains attached to the prothallus. The fertilized egg is now a diploid zygote and grows by mitosis into a diploid sporophyte, the typical fern plant. Uses Ferns are not as important economically as seed plants but have considerable importance in some societies. Some ferns are used for food, including the fiddleheads of Pteridium aquilinum, bracken, Matucha strutiuteris, ostrich fern, and Osmundastrum cinnamomium, cinnamon fern. Diplasium esculentum is also used by some tropical persons, for example in Budu Pakis, a traditional dish of Brunei, as food. Tubers from the para Tasana salicina king fern are a traditional food in New Zealand and the South Pacific. Fern tubers were used for food 30,000 years ago in Europe. Fern tubers were used by the Guanches to make gofio in the Canary Islands. Ferns are generally not known to be poisonous to humans. Licorice fern rhizomes were chewed by the natives of the Pacific Northwest for their flavor. Ferns of the genus Azola are very small, floating plants that do not resemble ferns. Called the mosquito fern, they are used as a biological fertilizer in the rice paddies of Southeast Asia, taking advantage of their ability to fix nitrogen from the air into compounds that can then be used by other plants. One, Many ferns are grown in horticulture as landscape plants, for cut foliage and as houseplants, especially the Boston fern Nephrolopus exaltata, and other members of the genus Nephrolopus. The bird's nest fern Asplenium nidus, is also popular, as are the staghorn ferns genus Platycerium. Perennial also known as hardy, ferns planted in gardens in the northern hemisphere also have a considerable following. Several ferns are noxious weeds or invasive species, including Japanese climbing fern Ligodium japonicum, mosquito fern and sensitive fern Onoclea sensibilis. Giant water fern Salvinia molesta is one of the world's worst aquatic weeds. 
The important fossil fuel coal consists of the remains of primitive plants, including ferns. Ferns have been studied and found to be useful in the removal of heavy metals, especially arsenic, from the soil. Other ferns with some economic significance include Dryopterus filix moss, male fern, used as a vermifuge, and formerly in the U.S. pharmacopoeia. Also, this fern accidentally sprouting in a bottle resulted in Nathaniel Bagshaw Ward's 1829 invention of the terrarium or Wardian case. Rumora adiantiformis, floral fern, extensively used in the florist trade. Microsorum teropus, java fern, one of the most popular freshwater aquarium plants. Osmunda regalis, royal fern, and Osmunda cinnamomea, cinnamon fern, the root fiber being used horticulturally. The fiddleheads of O. cinnamomea are also used as a cooked vegetable. Matucha strutiateris, ostrich fern, the fiddleheads used as a cooked vegetable in North America. Pteridium aquilinum or Pteridium esculentum bracken, the fiddleheads used as a cooked vegetable in Japan and are believed to be responsible for the high rate of stomach cancer in Japan. It is also one of the world's most important agricultural weeds, especially in the British Highlands, and often poisons cattle and horses. Diplasium esculentum, vegetable fern, a source of food for some native societies. Teres vitata, brake fern, used to absorb arsenic from the soil. Polypodium glyceriza, licorice fern, roots chewed for their pleasant flavor. Tree ferns, used as building material in some tropical areas. Syathia cooperi, Australian tree fern, an important invasive species in Hawaii. Ceratopterus richardi, a model plant for teaching and research, often called sea fern. Culture Pteridologist The study of ferns and other pteridophytes is called pteridology. A pteridologist is a specialist in the study of pteridophytes in a broader sense that includes the more distantly related lycophytes. Pteridomania Pteridomania is a term for the Victorian-era craze of fern collecting and fern motifs in decorative art including pottery, glass, metals, textiles, wood, printed paper, and sculpture. Appearing on everything from christening presents to gravestones and memorials. The fashion for growing ferns indoors led to the development of the Wardian case, a glazed cabinet that would exclude air pollutants and maintain the necessary humidity. The dried form of ferns was also used in other arts, being used as a stencil or directly inked for use in a design. The botanical work, The Ferns of Great Britain and Ireland, is a notable example of this type of nature printing. The process, patented by the artist and publisher Henry Bradbury, impressed a specimen onto a soft lead plate. The first publication to demonstrate this was Alois Auer's The Discovery of the Nature Printing Process. Fern bars were popular in America in the 1970s and 80s. Folklore Ferns figure in folklore, for example in legends about mythical flowers or seeds. In Slavic folklore, ferns are believed to bloom once a year, during the Ivan Kupala night. Although alleged to be exceedingly difficult to find, anyone who sees a fern flower is thought to be guaranteed to be happy and rich for the rest of their life. Similarly, Finnish tradition holds that one who finds the seed of a fern in bloom on midsummer night will, by possession of it, be guided and be able to travel invisibly to the locations where eternally blazing will owe the wisps called Arnavalkaya mark the spot of hidden treasure. These spots are protected by a spell that prevents anyone but the fern seed holder from ever knowing their locations. Organisms confused with ferns Misnomers Several non-fern plants and even animals are called ferns and are sometimes confused with true ferns. These include asparagus fern. This may apply to one of several species of the monocot genus asparagus, which are flowering plants. Sweet fern. A flowering shrub of the genus Comptonia. Air fern. A group of animals called hydrozoan that are distantly related to jellyfish and corals. They are harvested, dried, dyed green, and then sold as a plant that can live on air. 
While it may look like a fern, it is merely the skeleton of this colonial animal. Fern bush Camibaciaria millifolium A rose family shrub with fern-like leaves. Fern tree Jacaranda mimosifolia An ornamental tree of the order Lamaalas. Fern-like flowering plants Some flowering plants such as palms and members of the carrot family have pinnate leaves that somewhat resemble fern fronds. However, these plants have fully developed seeds contained in fruits, rather than the microscopic spores of ferns. Gallery See also British Teratological Society Chirosia vitaletti Fern gall Fern spike Fern sports Paisley design Teratophyte Silver fern flag Notes References Bibliography External links <inaudible>